Nuclear power is a complex, multifaceted issue containing strong pros and cons. However, if you're looking to make a case against it, one word does a very good job for you. Chernobyl. After the meltdown in 1986, it became a watchword for the dangers of nuclear power. New reports of nuclear reactions discovered smoldering, like embers at a barbecue, in an inaccessible chamber at the site, tell us the legacy of that meltdown is still developing. Here is what you need to know. Scientists have recorded a rise in fission reactions around the destroyed nuclear reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, according to New Scientist. The plant is surrounded by a megastructure called Chernobyl New Safe Confinement, and sensors around the structure have registered increased neutron emissions, according to Reuters. Originally, the Unit 4 reactor at the Chernobyl plant experienced a meltdown in April of 1986, after an unexpected drop in power during a safety test, according to Science Alert. Explosions of compressed steam released as a result of the meltdown sent out radioactive material across Europe, helping lead to the premature deaths of what could be tens of thousands of people. The concern now is that an increase in neutron emissions could create an uncontrolled nuclear fission reaction and further explosions. In nuclear fission, a neutron collides with a uranium atom and splits it, releasing energy and additional neutrons. These neutrons then collide with further uranium atoms in a chain reaction, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration. The increase in neutron emissions may have been caused by changes in rainwater levels since the installation of a new shelter over the site in 2016, according to Reuters, citing scientists at Ukraine's Institute for Safety Problems of Nuclear Power Plants. According to new scientists, the issue may relate to one chamber, known as Subreactor Room 305-2 in particular. Room 305-2 is thought to contain large amounts of radioactive material, and the exact amount of rainwater in the room promotes or reduces the likelihood of fission reactions. Large amounts of water, as there may have been previously, slow neutrons down, preventing them from being captured by other nuclei. Meanwhile, if there is no water at all, neutrons can move too quickly to be easily captured. After the installation of the shelter, it is speculated that there may be just the right amount of water to facilitate reactions, which may explain the increased neutron emissions. Neil Hyatt, nuclear materials chemist at the University of Sheffield, sought to play down the risks of an explosion, telling new scientists, We're talking about very low rates of fission, so it's not like a fizzing nuclear reactor. Our estimation of fizzle material in that room means that we can be fairly confident that you're not going to get such rapid release of nuclear energy that you have an explosion, he said. However, perhaps less reassuringly, he added, but we don't know for sure. These days, of course, Chernobyl is a veritable hive of activity. Chernobyl gets a new lease on life. Ukraine has just unveiled a solar power plant just 100 meters from Chernobyl's nuclear site in which a nuclear disaster occurred 30 years ago. According to a Reuters report, the power plant will consist of photovoltaic solar panels to produce energy and will be connected to the power grid. Ukraine plans to diversify its energy sources by using renewable energy such as solar power. About 3,800 panels will be installed and will produce enough energy to power 2,000 apartments. The Chernobyl solar power plant currently has a capacity of 1 megawatt, but there are plans to eventually increase it to 100 megawatts. Chernobyl's nuclear site exploded in 1986 and forced hundreds of thousands of people to evacuate the contaminated area, which resulted in the area being abandoned due to radiation. Today, almost 10 years since a massive earthquake and tsunami struck Japan in 2011, the country is still struggling to decontaminate the radioactive mess that is the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Three of the plant's nuclear reactors went into meltdown when the tsunami broke through a seawall and flooded the plant. As the facility's cooling systems failed in the days that followed, the reactors melted down and tons of radioactive material were released. Much of that radiation was trapped in flood water and water used to cool the runaway nuclear reactions. Most of the radioactive isotopes have been removed from the water by using a complex filtration process, but one isotope, tritium, cannot be removed so the water has been stored in huge tanks which will fill up by 2022. Japan's government has now announced that it will have to release the 1.23 million tons of radioactive water into the ocean when its current holding tanks start to run over in 2022. Environmental and fishing groups oppose the idea, as they fear that the radioactivity in the water will harm sea animals and the people who eat these animals. However, many scientists say the risk that it would pose is low. It's been 10 years since Japan's 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster, and Fox News reports that experts say cleaning up the leaky nuclear reactors will take another 30 years and billions of dollars. 
Officials believe that the work could cost the government much more than $76 billion. This work would focus on removing nuclear fuel and about 900 tons of melted fuel debris, while also disposing of contaminated cooling water and dismantling the four reactors. Japan has already spent $295 billion on the region's recovery. Details about what's happening inside the reactors are largely unknown because it's still too dangerous for humans to go inside, and robots can only provide a partial view of the melted fuel. In 2022, workers plan to test a mechanical arm that will retrieve fuel debris at the bottom of the Unit 2 reactor. 1.24 million tons of contaminated water are circulating through the reactors and will soon fill up the hundreds of giant tanks that hold it. And treatment of this water can only remove certain radioactive elements, but it can't remove the toxic tritium in the water. A massive floating nuclear power plant is now on its way to an Arctic port after Russia's state nuclear corporation Rosatom launched the nuclear plant over the weekend. Russian officials say the academic Lomonosov is set to become the first series of floating nuclear power plants Russia plans to develop. The portable plant is not self-propelled and must be towed to the desired location. It is designed to provide energy to port cities and offshore gas and oil extracting platforms. The floating nuclear power plant will be towed from St. Petersburg and around Norway to a Russian town called Mirmansk to take on nuclear fuel. From Mirmansk, the 232 million US dollar nuclear plant will head to the Arctic to power the oil industry town of Pivik. With two nuclear reactors, the nuclear plant will produce up to 70 megawatts of electricity, enough to power a city of 100,000 inhabitants. Bosatom says the nuclear plant is designed with a great margin of safety that exceeds all possible threats and makes nuclear reactors invincible for tsunamis and other natural disasters. Bosatom also added that the floating nuclear plant meets all requirements of the International Atomic Energy Agency and do not pose any threats to the environment. Despite such reassurances, Greenpeace nuclear expert John Heverkamp told Engadget that having nuclear reactors moving around the Arctic Ocean creates an obvious threat to a fragile environment which is already affected by climate change. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.